Today, swimming uphill is no fun. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today we look at the full year results from Bendigo and Adelaide Bank, the fifth largest bank in Australia. It gives us a chance to review the momentum in the sector as the issues facing Bendigo are similar to those faced by the other players. And given everything, it's not a bad result, but margin pressures and questions about future home lending volumes haunt the sector, and Bendigo is no exception. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to make great content. Here is the link, and it's also in the comments below. Australia's fifth largest bank announced an after-tax profit of $434.5 million for the 12 months to the 30th of June 2018. That's up 1.1% from the prior year and underlying cash earnings were $445.1 million, up 6.4% on the prior year. They were lower in the second half, though. Their cost-to-income ratio fell 50 basis points to 55.6%, and their return on equity was 8.23%, up 13 basis points. They called out increased compliance costs, a 3.5% rise in staff salaries, higher software amortisation, and second half 2018 negative jaws. Total gross loans rose 1.4% to $61.8 billion, and home lending grew below system at 4.7%, and retail deposits stayed steady at 80.2%, growing at 0.09% for the year. They reported a margin of 2.36% up 14 basis points, but the exit margin is falling, reflecting pressure in the markets. In fact, deposits were repriced down by 11 basis points over the year, and especially in the second half. We're seeing this across the board. Savings rates are being crimped to protect margins, as the RBA Statement on Monetary Policy, released last Friday, also showed. There was a significant fall in other income, with lower ATM fees, lower trading book income, and a range of other factors. It fell 9.2% on the prior year, from $309 million to $281 million this year. This is reflective of industry-wide pressures. While business arrears fell slightly, there were rises in 90-day plus past due in Western Australia, Queensland, and New South Wales stroke ACT. So the portfolio risks rose again consistent with CBA last week and other reports. Default risks are rising. Key start loans, which were purchased from the Western Australian Government entity, were included from June 2017 and include a large number of first-time buyer loans. Their home safe business overlay reflects an assumed 3% increase in property prices in the next 18 months before returning to a long-term growth rate of 6%. This is, well, courageous in the current climate, given the exposure to property in Sydney and Melbourne. And Melbourne now appears to be falling faster. Great Southern past due 90 days was $50.5 million, down 36% from June 2017. Their CET1 ratio rose 35 basis points since June 2017 to 8.62%, and their total capital rose 39 basis points to 12.85%. The new accounting standard, AASB9, led to an increase of $112.8 million expected loss, and the increase was taken through retained earnings as at the 1st of July 2018 the CET1 ratio will decrease by 8 basis points on the 1st of July 2018 as a result. The bank said that their last residential mortgage-backed security transaction was in August 2017 for $750 million, and they are evaluating the new APRA credit risk proposals and work towards an advanced creditation is continuing, though we think the benefit is being eroded. 
the liquidity coverage ratio was 125.6%, and the net stable funding ratio was 109% as at the 30th of June 2018. They also disclosed data from TikTok, the quick approval online channel, with $1.36 billion of submitted applications and $170 million in the loan portfolio. We think TikTok is pointing the way to the future, and this data suggests a more responsible way to lend with lower debt servicing ratios than the typical big players are achieving. And of course, the fast turnaround offered by the digital platform. So all up, Bendigo did pretty well. But margin pressure, slower loan volumes, and lower other income suggest that banking is getting tougher. Their share price rose just a little. And of course, if home prices fall further, this will impact their exposure in HomeSafe. So lenders generally are on a knife edge. And so to Domain, the property classified business spun off from Fairfax Media, who today also reported subdued listings in Sydney for the first six weeks of the financial year. The company posted a net loss of $6.2 million for the year to June, once a $29.6 million loss in significant items, such as exiting an early stage investment in personalised business moving services Bevo, and a revaluation of its investment in online service marketplace OneFlare had been taken into account. Without significant items, Domain would have a net profit after tax of $52.9 million, up 7.7%. Revenue excluding significant items was 11.5% to $357.3 million. Nine Entertainment Co. recently announced plans to merge with Fairfax, including taking control of its stake in the property listings platform. And over the past year, Domain's core digital revenue growth was up 16.7%, residential revenue was up 19.9%, and media developers and commercial was up 11.2%. Agent services were up 9.2%. Print revenues, though, dropped 12.6%, with earnings down 3.4% over the year after cost reduction initiatives. This covers domains, magazines and content in metropolitan dailies, including the Sydney Morning Herald, The Age, the Australian Financial Review and Domain Review. Domain's share price jumped 3.29% to 3.30 and a 70% franc dividend of $0.04 a share will be paid to domain shareholders on the 4th of September. Trends in the second half were softer overall, reflecting a more challenging environment than the first half, the company said, adding there is a continued focus on cost efficiencies relating to print and distribution. But of course, if the property market continues to slow, then domain will find it hard to drive new growth. So standing back then, two companies both highly exposed to the property sector and thus swimming uphill at the moment. Very much in line with our post yesterday about who benefits from high home prices. If you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. The link is in the comments below. As always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when released new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you're already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.